In my ideal education system, I would say that technology and AI would really be aimed at removing most of the administrative tasks and burdens from teachers and school leaders. It, it is often not conceivable and people do not um, realize how much administrative burden systems place on teachers, on, on school principals. It's, it's often the bigger part of their day rather than actually taking care of the children. Um, so it would be, in my mind, an ecosystem of tools that teachers can also engage in using any natural language of their choice. Um, it should be focused on assisting educators in very specific instructional moments like formative assessment or differentiated instruction and give teachers access to and facilitate their adoption of a wide array of curated instructional strategies that can help them um, select what may, may actually be the most appropriate strategy and approach for a given group of children based on these children's learning progress and socio-emotional needs. In this scenario, in this education system, the teacher's time and attention would really be laser focused on understanding and meeting their students' diverse needs. While students can use the technology to access high quality, curriculum aligned and inclusive learning opportunities in their own language and to really actively engage and practice with at select times. In my um, imagination, teachers would orchestrate this for their students and really engaging with the students directly and personally to link these technology mediated learning experiences to their students context and everyday life. And that really would aim to increase the relevance also of what they do and how that applies uh, to their family, to their community and to their idea of their future and their work and their life, right? Um, during my doctoral studies, I uh, took a class on multicultural education and I had the opportunity to read an essay from Professor Dr. Rudin Sims Bishop. And that essay has stuck with me ever since. So I'm going to take the liberty of reading out a little bit of, um, of that essay. Um, Dr. Sims Bishop says, books are sometimes windows offering views of worlds that may be real or imagined, familiar or strange. These windows are also sliding glass doors and readers only have to walk through in imagination to become part of whatever world has been created or recreated by the author. And when lighting conditions are just right, however, a window can also be a mirror and literature transforms human experience and reflects it back to us and in that reflection, we can see our own lives and experiences as part of the larger human experience. And in my ideal education system, I imagine technology to complement real books and to serve as even more powerful mirrors, windows and sliding glass doors while recognizing and amplifying the importance of personal human interaction. I think research and practice uh, continues to surface uh, very consistently that there are some things that are really important for technology to actually have some sort of positive outcome or impact. Um, first and foremost, alignment is central. So when you design and implement a technology initiative, really want to make sure that it is um, complementing and aligning with whatever national or school level education development objectives uh, are currently in place. Um, so that the technology initiative doesn't happen in isolation or even worse, in competition to that. And that also um, holds true for the alignment of what teachers do with technology in their actual classroom. So that's the pedagogical alignment to the learning objective of the lesson, the curriculum, that is really, really key. Um, 
very comprehensive, um, targeted, ongoing and practical teacher professional development is absolutely essential. And I can speak a whole lot more to teacher professional development. Um, but another important condition that I think is often overlooked is to really think about and analyzing local stakeholders, um, really getting local stakeholders engaged, for buy-in, for ownership, including at the community level. That helps sustain technology initiatives, not just financially, but also politically. Um, when we talk about sustaining and sustainability, it's really important in my experience um, to really think through and model the total cost of ownership of the intervention, not just for the ministry and at the, at the sort of system level, but also for the schools. There is. Um, inevitably some sort of cost or resource need um, that the school needs to uh, be aware of. And making that explicit not only allows for informed decision, but really allows us also to monitor costs and to really also establish um, argumentation around cost efficiency and effectiveness of these initiatives. Um, in my experience, we also need to be very mindful and mitigate actively against unintended consequences. What we really do not want to do, and we have unfortunately seen a lot of that during COVID-19, that on the one hand side, uh, we have seen the incredible potential technology has to overcome some of the barriers in terms of, um, you know, people being together in one place, um, you know, geographic, uh, access and so forth, but it also can really deepen existing disparities. So we want to make sure that when we design and deploy technology, that that condition is actively planned for. Um, and aligned with that, uh, important is also to really think through what is your learning agenda and how do you monitor and evaluate your deployment such that you can actually document and see whether you're making any progress and for which children or which teachers and under what conditions. Um, and maybe lastly, in all of that, a critical condition is really the system support. Um, system support to the innovative schools, school leaders and teachers um, that are doing this work, right? That are willing to try. We, we need to see these um, individuals and, and these schools. We need to recognize them actively engage them to become champions of the initiative. And that is possible to do even in very vulnerable contexts and probably even um, more so it's important in those contexts so that other teachers and other schools um, can see an example of this works, this helps and get excited. But Tangerine is also open source data collection software that was developed by RTI, by my team here, um, and really designed for use on mobile devices. So with the software, you can collect a wide range of data, including from learning assessment, classroom observations, and interviews. Um, Tangerine can integrate cognitive and non-cognitive measures. So it could be, say, an assessment of math or English or geography, right? But also assessing, say, social emotional well-being or screening for disabilities. It can include inventories for our classroom materials or the school compound um, and capture teacher opinions. So as a platform, it's really been designed um, to be offline first because it was designed for low resource environments and it can very easily be customized to uh, different contexts, countries, languages, and scripts. Um, when we developed Tangerine about 14 years ago, the initial purpose was really aimed at helping to improve the quality and the immediacy of data from very large scale learning assessment. So when I talk about large scale learning assessment, I mean, um, 
say an early grade reading or mathematic assessment with 10,000 students in 100 schools and three, four different languages and, and grades. And that's the kind of work that we at RTI and many others have been doing for many years to help governments really better understand what's actually going on in their classrooms on student learning. Since we developed Tangerine now, 14 years ago, um, it's been used by over 80 ministries of education and other organizations in like 65 countries and 100 languages to conduct millions of students' um, assessments and other data collections of this sort. Over time, however, the platform, and this is what I'm particularly excited about as a, as a teacher myself, um, the platform has expanded and become a sustainable teacher pedagogical support and program monitoring platform, which in some countries is actually used nationwide. So it not only is a data collection platform for the kind of learning assessments that governments may do here and there, um, as I described earlier, but it's a, a tool that helps teachers systematically implement formative assessment and student feedback in their classroom. So it's designed to empower teachers in their daily teaching and not to replace them. It only requires a single device, so that uh, one mobile phone, for example, that the teacher may already own, and it doesn't require any internet when you're using it in the classroom. It's also super easy to learn. It takes teachers at most one or two hours just to understand the, the basic functionality. And besides supporting teachers in this kind of formative assessment and then in helping them to adjust their instruction to students' needs, the platform also has been designed to really support teacher coaching and to do that across hundreds and thousands of schools. So think um, the platform in the hands of a school director or a district education officer as they visit a school or a classroom. And what Tangerine helps is it helps structure that visit. It provides access to quality classroom observation tools. And then based on what the observer may have entered, it actually provides evidence-informed feedback tips that the coach can then discuss with the teacher during reflection. And research suggests that it's really that reflection, that conversation that can be an incredibly powerful lever for teacher growth growth and we have optimized tangerine to support that and maybe as a last point as i mentioned earlier tangerine is sustainable um the amazing thing about tangerine i think um is that it's actually open source so meaning that anybody who has some experience managing a server can go to github look at the instructions we provided and download it and install the platform on their server we can provide technical assistance but it's not required. And in fact, there's a growing number of ministries of education in low and middle income countries who are running their own Tangerine servers independently from us and have done so for many years. The question of why, why is education not serving right now all children as these kind of mirrors, windows and sliding glass doors. I, I, think, I think it is, but it is in pockets. You find this in every country. You find the most amazing teachers in every country on earth. The problem is you don't find them everywhere. Not every child um, has that opportunity. Um, and most of the time, it's not um, down to the individual teacher. But as I outlined earlier, it is a monumental task to be a good teacher. And for those that have never stood in front of a classroom of 50, 60 tiny human beings <laughs> um, and tried to in a very planful and structured way allow them to have a brain altering experience that would create insights and knowledge that lasts forever you know it's it's very easy 
to speak negatively of teachers, of schools, of education systems, but it is incredibly difficult. The amount of balls that teachers and school leaders have to juggle and keep in the air at any one point in time, um, it's just tremendous. And interventions and projects by nature are often limited either uh, in their scope, in their duration, and, and it is incredibly difficult to scale impact. We often take a shortcut and we design this very clinical intervention, ticking off all the boxes, many of which I have mentioned today, of what the evidence said, what does the research say, and what have we learned in 20, 30, 40 years of um, doing education reform, um, etc. But the reality is that schools are not clinical places. They are very dynamic, very changing um, glimpses into a rich human reality and coming with this standardized thing and dropping it there and then expecting it to look the same place everywhere. It's, it's, it's just very naive. Um, and yet, if you are often pressured to achieve measurable outcomes in three years, four years, five years, um, you you tend to be forced into this into this you know place between a stone and a, and, and a wall uh, of of trying to fit uh, that context into your little box of intervention, um, and I think that just makes it so hard, right? There is no silver bullet to this. It takes tenacity. It takes time, it takes resources, and it takes a tremendous amount of political will, as well as a deep understanding of what motivates people.